Joining me right now is Mahoney Asset Management CEO Ken Mahoney, also joining the conversation all morning long. Fox Business is Dagan McDowell, and it is great to see everybody this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Ken, kicking it off with you, your thoughts on the next six months. We are pretty much almost at the halfway mark of 2021. How do you expect these markets to perform rest of the year? I think we grind higher, Maria. I mean, we were told a couple of weeks ago, look, when you start talking about tapering, look out, you know, look out below. And we were talking about tapering right in the minutes. And, you know, we had a couple of nasty days, a couple of sell-offs, volatility went up, but we got through that period. We were also told just a couple of weeks ago that, you know, when cryptos go down, look out below, you know, and cryptos were down 25, 30% that one weekend. What happened Monday morning, the market shook it off and actually futures were higher that Monday morning. So, you know, the bears try everything. They throw all kinds of, you know, stories out. But at the end of the day, you still have an accommodative Fed. You have more stimulus coming, like the top of you spoke about, in the form of infrastructure spending. So it's really hard to be bearish here. Hey, granted, I don't think there's going to be a melt up here, for that matter. But I think we grind higher because of the Fed and because of more stimulus coming down the pipe. Ken, what about the inflation worries? We've got the price of oil surging to the highest level since 2018. Uh, we've got uh, $68 a barrel oil. This surge coming as OPEC is signaling a potentially tightening of global market ahead of the policy meeting on production. Oil prices more than doubling from the COVID-19 pandemic low of $30 last year. And this is just one commodity, Ken. You've got steel, lumber, and the rest also seeing uh, moves. The Fed keeps calling it transitory, but what's to say that prices aren't going to continue going up? with demand increasing now with the reopening. Right, especially oil. I mean, we hedge in our portfolios, XLE, that's the ETF that buys, you know, Exxon and Chevron and so forth. But no doubt, Maria, this is one of those worrisome signs because remember these prices, and we've seen this before when oil prices start going higher, what happens? They pass it on to consumers and you get this, this vicious cycle. So we're seeing today near $70 a barrel, though it's not surprising. I mean, this past weekend, AAA is probably going to report some major amount of traffic and people going out to see their loved ones. I think that's good news. Actually, it's nice to see demand increase, to tell you the truth, Maria. That's overall positive. But supply, you hear about OPEC, and you always have Iran as the wild card. And, of course, this administration doesn't like fossil fuels. So you kind of, you were, look, if we're going up because of demand, I can live with that. That's, that's kind of what we all want. But if it's going up because of supply disruptions, because of OPEC, because of this administration, that's worrisome because those are a little bit harder to fix because, you know, those are institutions that are very difficult to change their minds to. Okay, we want to we want to bring in Nancy Tangler here. She is joining the uh, the conversation this morning, all morning long. Nancy, it's great to have you. Let me ask you about what you're seeing in the markets here uh, from from Laffer Tangler. The the stocks that have performed well during the economic recovery this year, more than 24 different actively managed ETFs have surged over 20 percent. Uh, with the journal doing a whole assessment of value versus growth, value seeing the biggest gains as investors moved away from tech and stay-at-home stocks in the last month, Nancy. Would this be an area that you want to dip into now, even after these moves? Well, Maria, thanks for having me. Listen, I'm a value manager, and uh, I have said that I thought this value trade was a little bit uh, cyclical as opposed to a se secular move. So we've actually been buying uh, what we call growth at a reasonable price, some of the technology names, among others. And I, I, I'm also interested in what Ken thinks, because I— if growth does begin to slow in the economy, then that would benefit growth stocks counterintuitively. So uh, that's where we've been investing. We still own many of the value stocks, but we've been dipping our toes into many of the growth at a reasonable price names. Ken? So, you know, look, I, I, we're all watching this inflation uh, and really concerned by it. But I'll tell you what, look at the 10-year bond market. 10-year is looking at it at 1.6, pretty much pegged there. If we really thought inflation was coming back, wouldn't it be a two, two and a half percent, maybe three percent in a 10 year? So the, the bond market's not buying that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you know, we're really thinking here that I, I like the story too. The pendulum swung really far towards value. I think the money's going to start switching back towards growth. People are going to be really bored with value, top line growth, two percent, three percent. I mean, heck, a few weeks ago, the leadership and, and, and the markets were soap companies, beverage companies, and money. Again, I like the idea, you know, paying for growth at a reasonable price. And that's where you find your Apples and Googles and Amazons because they're growing top line and you could call them reasonably priced, to tell you the truth. 
Yeah, we're going to show you a morning mover in a second, Ken, uh, going private. But but let's, let me get your take on capital markets, whether you look at IPOs, deal flow. Is that going to be one of the triggers uh, for, for this market uh, to keep going higher? You say you're going to expect a, a, a continual climb rest of the year. This should be a good market. You know, February was probably the peak of, I guess, frothiness, if you want to call it, the AMCs. And game stocks that have come back, you know, SPACs, you know, Bitcoin miners and crypto miners, you had all going in the middle of February and they cooled off quite a bit. Many of those names are down 40, 50, 60 percent. So, again, and those are the type of names that come public, Maria. Those are the type of innovation companies that come to market. So now we're starting to see some money, again, gingerly going back into those areas. And that would set the stage for the back half of this year for better you know, IPO participation and so forth. So we're not there quite yet. I mean, we had to go through this this reshuffling from value to growth and so forth and growth back to value. But I do think uh, the IPO market will get stronger and allow for more companies to come to public. Again, not necessarily going SPACs public, but the traditional, you know, called traditional IPOs. All right. We will leave it there. Ken, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much. Ken Mahoney joining us this morning, where we see a market that is on fire, up 182 points on the Dow Industrials. Here's your morning mover, Cloudera.